Are you newly licensed? Have you never built an antenna before? Does antenna building sound scary to you? Well, it doesn't have to be. Uh, in today's episode, I'll show you how to make uh, probably the easiest dipole ever built, and I'll show you how to multiband it. Hang on after the intro, and uh, we'll get started. In order to, to build a simple dipole, we will need a, a couple of items. First of all, I'm going to use these uh, binding post adapters. You can get them everywhere, eBay, Amazon, uh, local electronic stores, probably. Uh, this one has a BNC connector, but uh, all my antennas on all my radios has uh, PL259, so I'm going to use an adapter here. Uh, you'll also need a pair of cutters, some electrician's tape, some wire. This is a uh, one and a half square millimeter uh, wire, but any wire will do. Use whatever you have lying around. And optionally, you'll need some ring connectors and some something to crimp the connectors with. This is not needed, uh, I'll use it uh, just to make the antenna a little bit more reliable. And uh, you might also consider soldering uh, the connectors, but that's also an optional step. Before we get started on building the antenna, we're gonna need some measurements. We're gonna need to know the length of each leg of the dipole. And uh, for those of you who are licensed, uh, you probably remember the formula. It's uh, 300 divided by frequency, which will give you the wavelength in meters. And uh, then you need to divide that number by two, since a dipole is a uh, half wavelength antenna. And uh, since you're gonna know the length of each leg, you need to divide the dipole length by two to get each leg. Uh, you can either do that, or you can use an online calculator. And I told you I was gonna multi-band the antenna, which we'll do in, uh, in somewhat of a, of a cheap and dirty way, but it'll still be somewhat multi-banded. So we're gonna use two bands. We're gonna use 10 meters because there's been some Aurora lately and 10 meters has been open for some DX. And then we're gonna use 20 meters because 20 meters is a good beginner band and it's, uh, it's a good DX band. So we'll start with the 10 meters and we'll cut that for 28.4 megahertz, which will be uh, the SSB portion of the 10 meter band, which will give you a total antenna length of 502.3 centimeters, uh, or a leg length, which is relevant for us, uh, of uh, 251.14 centimeters. And for the 20 meter band, we'll use 14.2 Two, which is roughly uh, in the middle of the 20 meter band. And that will give us an antenna length of uh, 1,004.6 centimeters. Uh, and a dipole leg length of 502.3 centimeters. So we'll start with that. And um, when you build your your dipole, remember to cut the legs a little bit too long because we're going to trim it later on. And uh, it's easier to cut wire than it is to uh, add wire. And you might ask yourself, do I need an antenna analyzer? And the short answer is no. Uh, you can use your radio's SWR uh, meter and uh, do some measurements across the band to figure out where the antenna is resonant. It will not be as smooth as using an antenna analyzer, but uh, it's uh, a lot cheaper and uh, this will be a cheap belt. I'll show you uh, this on my Zagu G90, which has a uh, SWR uh, curve, which will show the resonant point of the antenna. Uh, ICOM radios has uh, somewhat of a similar thing and uh, probably a lot of other radios. 
So no, you don't need an antenna analyzer. Uh, we'll uh, get started on building it and uh, move on to the workshop, or as uh, my wife calls it, the dining room table. did not take into consideration uh, when doing this in uh, January was uh, the ground being dead frozen. So I've just strapped my uh, fiberglass mast to a ladder here just to be able to test the antenna. To get the uh, binding post secured to the mast we're going to use some good old electrical tape. Uh, we should not use the uh, first couple of sections of the mast because that'll be just too flimsy. So we're going to secure it a little way up here. Probably the second element will be good. We're going to take some electrical tape and just wrap it around. Just good as it, it gets. It's up here and it's just a test install, so we'll see how it goes. Then we're gonna take our coax and mount that before we raise the mast. It is a typical beginner's mistake to uh, put the antenna up in the air and uh, forgetting the coax. So we're not gonna do that. After we've secured our coax, we're going to take another round of electrical tape around here. Just to spread the weight out on a couple of different points of tape. Then we'll take our 10 meter elements for starters, unscrew the cap on the binding post, which is a little bit flimsy since we put it on the mast first. Put the element in. And then we'll screw it back on. And tightening as good as possible. And we'll do the same on the next end here. the element on and tightening the cap. For the end we're going to do just a small fold over on the antenna and wrapping a couple rounds of electrical tape around it. It's better to use a little bit too much and a little bit too little. The 10 meter antenna is now up in the air and tied off. 
well, check out the radio. We're now at the lower end of the 10 meter band. And we'll check the analyzer here just to see. And it's a flat one to one on the lower end of the band. Let's increase the bandwidth here to check. I guess that's a dead lucky build because we don't have to adjust anything on the, this antenna. Well, we got pretty much lucky with the 10 meter antenna. Uh, we were spot on on our cutting, so we didn't have to adjust anything. Uh, if we would have to adjust anything, we would have cut it uh, just to match the resonance point. So we'll go on to the 20 meter. We'll do the same process there. I'm gonna hook it up and uh, we'll see what the SWR is there. So I got the 20 meter element up and as you can see, it is a little bit longer shorter distance until it's secured to the garage. We'll check the SWR and see if we need to trim that as well. And we're on 20. Now we're gonna check the SWR here and see how that is. And that is high. Uh, lot way too high actually we gotta try to see where it's it's resonant So uh, 20 is too high. We're going to cut a little bit off and see if that helps. I've now ended up cutting off about 5 centimeters on each end. And we'll do another SWR scan and see how we are. And we are better. Uh, probably gonna need another five centimeters to to get it uh, pretty much where we want it. So hang on. I've now done a whole lot of more cutting, as you can see. Um, let's check the SWR now. And we're down to somewhere around 1.5. 1 to 1 1.5 and uh, that's more than good enough because most tuners will actually tune that. So let's hook the radio up to the 7300 in the shack and uh, we'll see how it performs. There is a contest going on but we'll uh, try some FT8 and uh, check what PSK reporter says. I am finally back in the shack uh, after trimming the antennas. Took a bit longer than expected to trim the 20 meter antenna. Uh, and it was a little bit uh, colder than I expected outside. Uh, about uh, building the antenna, uh, I put on some uh, ring connectors and soldered them. Uh, both the ring connectors, the solder and the heat shrink, they're optional. You could just wrap the wire around the binding post adapter, but uh, in order to have something that lasts a little bit longer, I ended up uh, doing that. But that is, as I said, optional if you just want to get on the air. Uh, we're going to try the antenna now. I've set up some FT8 and uh, we'll uh, do a couple of CQs and see where we're spotted just to, to see how that goes. So hang on. Okay, we've been uh, calling CQ for, for a couple of minutes here. And um, the map on PSK Reporter is starting to, to populate a little bit here. Uh, we're getting some... Uh, some replies to our CQ, a couple of Germans, and now a Croatian station. Uh, nothing, nothing really DX, but the antenna works. And uh, after I tune it, uh, SWR is, is 1 to 1.1, so I'm satisfied with that. I'm probably going to uh, trim it a little bit more uh, to 
tomorrow. But for a start, it's it's good. And now let's just check out PSK Reporter here and see uh, where we are spotted. Uh, as you can see, we're spotted pretty much where I expected us to, to be spotted. Uh, mainly Europe, a uh, little bit of the east coast of the US, uh, and some Midwestern stations. Uh, one spot in the Middle East, and, uh, and Western Russia, and uh, Kazakhstan. So at this time of year and this time of day, uh, that's entirely as expected. So I can't really complain. And um, 10 meter is dead, so I can't really test the, the 10 meter antenna now. I'm going to test that later on, and uh, maybe I'll do something about that. But uh, anyway, this is how the, uh, the 20 meter dipole uh, with binding post adapter performs. As you can see, building and uh, trimming an antenna is not hard. I did this from uh, parts I had laying around the house. You could do it a little bit more advanced. Uh, you could uh, use a ballon, which in, in some or most cases probably is preferred. You could 3D print some parts and make it look prettier. But uh, my point today was to show you that it's, it's not hard to get started and it gives instant results. So just get out there, build some antennas and have fun. And if you like this video, please uh, like, comment, and subscribe, and uh, check out my other videos. Thank you for watching the LB0 Foxtrot India YouTube channel. Okay, back on a quick footnote here. Um, I told you the antenna was going to be multi-banded, and uh, it's probably no surprise to you, but it's, it's not really multi-banded. Uh, although we have different elements, so if you're going to use one band, you hook on the element for, for the band you're going to use. For example, the 20 meter band. And if you're going to swap to the 10 meter band, you unscrew the 20 meter element and uh, put the 10 meter element back on. So probably a little bit of clickbait here, but uh, yeah, no surprise. It's uh, somewhat a quick and dirty way of doing a multi-band antenna. Thank you for watching again.